Alright. Yesterday we did the Frigidaire refrigerator and today we did the Frigidaire dryer. Um, I'm going to go to a different manufacturer next week, but uh, let's go over this. What color wire is a neutral wire in the refrigerator? Light blue. So if we look here, where is the power cord on this refrigerator? To the right of the board. To the right of the board, right here. So let's zoom in for a second. And this is the power cord here. So this is a plug, but this is the actual end of the cord. This one is neutral, this is line. What's the center one? Ground. Ground. It says okay, ground. So this one, if we come down through the plug, it's light blue. So simple answer, light blue. So you're so used to so many manufacturers, black is line one, white is neutral, or red is power, and white is neutral. In this case, they use light blue. Which one is the power wire? Black. Green, yellow. Black. Oh. Green, yellow is ground. Ground, yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next question. When testing the main board for voltage, what different voltages could be found and list all the different voltages? So if we looked at the schematic here, and let's zoom out a little bit. One thing, if you paint it, oops, sorry, I went to the wrong diagram here. One thing, if you paint attention, the computer board, notice that they said DC side and AC side. So if you just put 12 volts on the DC side and put, didn't put 12 volts DC, it's not correct. You'd have the meter on the wrong setting. So the AC side, the only thing on the AC side is the power coming in, and refrigerators are normally 110 volts, 120 volts. Uh, so that's an acceptable answer. Uh, the voltages on the DC side is 5 volts and 12 volts DC. Why do you think they're two different voltages? Different components? Require different power? Uh, yeah, um, a lot of times the lower voltage will be for LEDs. the LEDs and everything, but if you notice, we have a flapper motor, dispenser light, dispenser panel, flapper position switch, and this heater. So 5 volts may be the LED lighting, and the 12 volts is going to go to the motors and the other components within the dispenser. Here the thermistors are all 5 volts DC. So if you see, why do we say three, three of them have the word 5 volts DC, for example, just out of curiosity, what's that? You have three different groups. You have the thermistor. The well, we have three different components, one in the freezer, one in the uh, freezer thermistor, which is measuring the freezer temperature. This one's actually measuring the evaporator tubing. And this one's the fresh food thermistor. But why does it say 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts? Because there could be some that test at 12 volts. No, they're all five volts, but Different. this five volts is, rep is representing this pin number 12, this one's number 6, this one's number 8. That means 7, 5, and 11 are what? Ground. They're ground or the negative. So if you're going to put your meter on there and you want to see if this, let's say the board says fresh food thermistor air. You, know, you say, oh, the other kind of display, the air says the fresh food thermistor is open. I need a new thermistor. Ma'am, I'm going to order you a new thermistor. You come back the next day, you put in a new thermostat, and it's still the same code. Yes, sir. So on the test, I know I put 5 volt DC and 12 volt DC, and I also put the reversible 12 volt DC. I don't know. Well, reversible 12 volt, if, if you look, J7 doesn't even go to anything. I'm, I'm not going to mark it wrong, but I really wasn't looking for that. Uh, reversal just means the plus and the minus might reverse. But what I wanted to get here was, let's say this thermistor gives you an open air, right? And you go ahead and put a new thermistor in and the air doesn't go away. Well, what does that mean? What could it be if it's not the thermistor? The line or the plug? It could be the harness from the board to it, or it could be the board itself. So how would you differentiate from one or the other? How do you say, well, how do I know if it's a board or how do I know if it's a wired harness? You go test the leads on the board on J6. Yeah, so if I wanted to check this thermistor, I'd go to 12 and 11. I'd put my meter on 12 and 11, put the red one on the 12, the black one on 11, and make sure that the black one's in common on your meter. And I'd look for 12, I'm sorry, 5 volts at these two points. If I had five volts on these two points, most likely what? It's a harness or the... Uh, the harness. 
So the next thing I would do is go 11 and 12 and do what? A continuity test to if I could read ohms of this thermistor. If I got a continuity test and I read ohms, probably even though I have voltage, the board is defective. But the other thing is you want to look at the plug as it plugs on the board. Sometimes the pins get rust or corrosion on them or the plug itself is bad. So you put your meter, your meter's like on the outside where the wires are, not necessarily where the pins of the board are. So if you've got continuity here, it's definitely not your harness and your thermistor, it's your board, even if you have the voltage, okay? Well, look, so you, can, you can have a voltage and your board still bad? You could have the voltage, but the board just logically, the, the program of the board <laughs> could be bad, or how it, how it reads that thermistor may not be correct. If you've got the proper resistance reading of that component, that component's not bad. And how would you test it? Well, you would test it against the other ones. The only problem is these are in the evaporator and this is in the refrigerator. And they might all be interchangeable as the same thermistor, like this one may work here and there. So they won't read exactly the same because they're in different temperatures. But if you check them all at room temperature and they all read the same, and you got that reading from this plug here, it can't be the sensor, it has to be the board. And that's especially if the board's giving you an open or shorted reading or something's wrong with that thermistor. But that's two ways to test. One, test voltage. Two, check continuity or resistance. Yes? Since K7s have been utilized, could you possibly move one of the components down to J7, like connect to J7? No, because of that. Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, it's 12 volts. Well, well, like, well let me ask you, we got, got 5 volts here, right? Yeah. But the voltage doesn't make the sensor do anything. It's not a, like a light bulb or a motor that you send power to and it lights up. The voltage is the board is sending a current or a voltage through that component based on the resistance. It's taking that as like a measurement, like your meter's taking a measurement. Okay? So by moving it here, the logic on the board that's trying to read the resistance value of that part is only on these two pins. You move this part down here, you're going to apply the proper voltage to it, but the board has no idea knowing that this sensor is down here now. And it's going to say, oh, I see you moved the sensor, but it tests good down here. The way the board is, if you look at a computer board, those little gold lines that you see on the board are the same as wires. And that sensor is only meant to be plugged on those two pins. You move it someplace else, the board has no idea what to do with it. Okay? okay? So that's the answer to that question. Um, number three, which connector on the main control board is power coming in, and what two pins would you use to test for incoming voltage? List the connector and the pin location. So where would you check for that voltage and... Uh, where would J1, you put your J1, meter? Pin one, K1, three. K1, three. Okay, J11 and J13. Would you put your red meter lead here and your black meter lead there? Or would you put your black one here and the red one there? It doesn't matter why. Because it's AC? Because it's AC voltage. DC voltage, it matters where the red and the black meter <coughs> leads go, but on AC voltage, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's going to get the proper voltage reading. It's alternating current. Okay. Um, number four, what is STD compressor and why does it have dotted lines? Standard compressor. <coughs> it could oh. possibly be there as well. Uh, not as well. Also, it may, it may be there. Either or. Oh, well, that's. So, what they're showing you is this is a variable speed compressor, and this box here is an inverter board or computer board and it has two different plugs going to it. The standard compressor has two wires there. What are they not showing the on the standard the compressor? Overload. The relay and the overload. <clears throat> so I was going to ask a question. How would you know by looking at the compressor on the refrigerator whether it was a regular compressor or a variable speed compressor? Whether it has an inverter board or, or the relay and overload. Yeah, and, and that, you can't even say whether it has an inverter board because some refrigerators, the inverter board assembly is built into the main board. So when you look at the refrigerator, you just have a plug with three wires that just plug right to the compressor, and you don't have that inverter board down on the bottom of the machine. So you're going to have to look at it and say, oh, I got three wires that plugged right on here, but I don't see any relay or overload on there. 
If it has a relay and overload, it's a regular compressor with a common start and run. All right? So if you had a standard compressor, this is where it would be connected. And then this one here is basically neutral. Uh, and then the red one comes down and gets power. So when the board energizes the condenser fan, it also will feed back here and energize the main compressor. All right? So is this fan still here if you have a variable speed compressor? Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's a solid line, it's always going to be there. Okay, yes, sir. Sorry, I keep asking questions, but it's, um, so you're saying that the dotted lines, it's either the variable compressor, the variable speed compressor is there, or the center compressor, or is it just... It would have either, either or, or in the refrigerator. If it had one, this is how the wires would connect to it. In other words, the variable speed is, con is not connected here. The standard compressor is getting its power off of this line here. But if we look at the, um, the variable speed, its wires connect here. So the, the power supply here is different. They both have 120 volts, but we also have what? Another plug with 12 volts DC, like the one we were working on the other day, like figuring out which one is 12 volts, which one is 120 volts. But how come they don't show this one? It, it just goes here and then, then ends. Because it's connected somewhere else on the board. That's it. So if we go over here, it's connected to J4, 11, and 12. And because it's DC voltage, 12 volts DC, it's on these two pins. So that plug over there is actually here on the DC voltage side. Remember, the board was split in half, and it had 120 and 12 volts going to that compressor. So that one compressor had two wires going to this board on this side, and the other one going to the other side over here. So this is the 12 volt side going to the compressor here. And that says the compressor control signal. In other words, that 12 volt circuit is the one that tells the compressor how fast it's going to run. The 120 volts is going to the inverter, and then the inverter converts that voltage to make the compressor actually run. The 12 volt does not actually go to the windings of the compressor. It's the communication between the main board and the inverter board to tell that board how fast to run the compressor. All right? So if you were checking to see if the boards were giving power to the inverter, you would go to, oops, went too far there. You would check 12 volts here and 120 volts here. If you have that, that's telling you the main board's doing the <coughs> job. Now, if the compressor's not working, you either have a bad compressor or a bad inverter, then what do we do? We just do what to the inverter? Ohm it out. We ohm it out. And I think here on the instructions, going too far, here on the instructions it tells you, I can't do it. Let me zoom out, then I'll zoom back in. Here on the instructions it tells you if you're checking the compressor. It's to the left. Is it? Mm -hmm. Up top. It, no, it's somewhere else. It should else. be to the left. It's on the right. Well, it tells you to check pin 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 3, and all three of them should give you the same resistance. Oh, no, it's right there in front of you. Oh, the ground was a speed right there. Is it four wires going to that? Oh, right here. Yeah, that's it right there. Hold on one second, Chris. So, man, if I zoom in too much, I can't. So, if we look right here, it says to check the resistance value of the compressor. You check these two pins, these two pins, and these two pins, and all three of them are equal. You may get a half an ohm off here, here, or there, but if one of those are not right, the compressor is probably bad. If all three of them are right, the compressor is probably good, the inverter is probably bad. Could the compressor still be bad if all three resistance are the same? Yeah. What's wrong with it then? Huh? Yeah, it can mechanically be bad. The, the crankcase is moving the piston or the piston could be stuck or lodged. It doesn't happen that often, but you could have a good resistance rate and still have a bad compressor. Now, what was your question, sir? On oh, the variable speed compressor, is it four wires going to that? Well, the, the fourth one will probably be ground. Okay. Uh, but to the inverter, there's four wires, but there's only three wires actually connecting to the compressor itself. And that would be coming off that inverter board. So we go back to this inverter board here. There's four wires coming in here. What they're not showing is from the inverter board to the compressor, there's only three wires mm. to those three pins. 
There is a fourth so wire. Still on the three pins on the yeah, the two compressors look identical. You look at it and they both have three pins on them. Uh, but the resistance value will tell you, oh, I have three different resistance readings. It's most likely a standard compressor. Mm -hmm. If I have three identical readings, it's a variable speed compressor. And that's only if you got it sitting on a bench and you want to know which one is which. Okay? So let's go to, by quick visual inspection, how would you tell uh, the two? By looking to see if it has a relay and overload on it or it has a computer board attached to it. Sometimes you buy the compressor, it comes with an inverter board, sometimes it don't have an inverter board. So uh, really, if you had a relay and overload, it's a standard compressor, okay? So if you got one on your truck and you, for, you, your box got destroyed, you're like, I don't know if this is a variable speed or, or, or whatever, that's how you would know. Um, if testing for incoming voltage to variable speed compressor inverter board, what voltages should, should be found? That's a typo there. And we said that those voltages would be what? 120 VAC. 120 and 12 volts DC. Damn, I put the 12 volts. Okay. So we went over those. When tested voltage to the inverter from the... Okay, we just did that, right? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. When tested voltage to the inverter from the main... Control no, we didn't do that one. I mean, you kind of went over it in a way. Oh, what connector pins would you use and what readings you get? Yeah, we went over that. That would be um, 120 on... Uh, you could actually use pin six on J two or J three, which is because it runs through the condenser pin. Line one in neutral, but the compressor neutral is actually what J three ten and J three six. So those were the ones that really should have put J three ten to be the neutral of the compressor, and J three six is line one of the compressor. I thought it was J two one. J two one. Oh, that's a standard compressor. You're right. Let's go back over it. J21 is going to the variable speed. And J310. I messed up and I did the standard compressor by mistake. And then the other one would have been J4, 11, and 12 for 12 volts DC. So that was my mistake. Thanks for correcting me. Um, what color wire from the ice maker energizes the water valve to fill when cycling? <coughs> so if we looked here, here's the ice maker. And we got black, yellow, green and yellow, and light blue. Oh, yellow. So green and yellow we said is what? Gravel, Brown. right? Okay, <laughs> and light blue we said is what? Neutral. Blue. We said at the very beginning. So if you look over here, these are the water valves, the ice maker, the dispenser, and the main one. So if you look at the ice maker water valve, what color is that? Somebody yellow. Knows. So if you follow that wire back, that goes to here to the ice maker. So the yellow wire is the one that feeds power to the water valve. All right, so what happens is black's coming in. The water valve was the one down at the third one. This one? Yeah. This has three, wa three water valve solenoids. You have the main one where the water comes into, and then you have two more after that. The main one goes up to the water filter. Water filter comes back to that valve body, and then it has two separate valves that can go out. One goes to the water in the door, and one goes up to the ice maker. But this one here is the ice maker water inlet valve, so I was specifically saying that one. But if you look, this yellow one, feeds that main one and the ice maker one at the same time. Well, the down there, I thought that the, the power couldn't get to that bottom one. Uh, we talked about in the other lecture that the dial is drawn backwards. Oh. It's that uh, the arrows point to a wall and it should <coughs> actually be what? Pointing this way so that when the voltage comes in here, it doesn't feed back that way. So if we look closely, and again, it's a schematic error. That is saying the arrows point to a wall, current can't go this way, but that's not true. It does go that way to that valve because we got to energize these two for ice maker 
and we energize these two for the water in the door. These should actually be drawn this way, with the arrow pointing that way. So when the, and the same one here, this should be like this. So when the voltage comes in here to the water valve and here to the ice maker water valve, this voltage hits a wall and cannot go back towards the dispenser valve. So that's an error in the diagram. That's a, the second error we had. Remember the other one we, we pointed out was missing a wire? So manufacturers getting sloppy in their diagrams, aren't they? Lazy. Lazy. Okay. What is the voltage to the evaporator or fan and what pins would you test from the main control board? Another typo. So the evaporator fan, we zoom out a little bit. Evaporator fan is where? Do you guys know where it is in there? Well, maybe DC. Well, let's see. <coughs> evaporator fan's here, right? Mm -hmm. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little better. How's that? So now here's the evaporator fan. So what two pins would you use to check the voltage eight, the evaporator nine. fan? J4, J489. You'd put your meter here and here. Which one would be the red lead and which one would be the black lead? Red lead on eight. Yeah. Red one would be on eight. And the black meter lead would be on nine because that's ground and that's positive. What's this one? What's that third wire coming off the fan? No. Is it your ground? And what? No, never mind. It's not a ground. No. <laughs> communication feedback. It's a communication one. What does that one do? Tell it speed. That's the board. Yeah, it tells the board the speed so it can adjust. It's so the board can control the speed and know how fast that pan is rotating. So when the refrigerator or freezer is too warm, the fan's running at max speed. Or if you're doing a diagnostics, the fan runs at max speed. If the refrigerator is cooling, it's been running for a while, and getting close to the temperature, the fan actually slows down uh, during the during time. Why does it slow down? You say why? Yeah. Well, it's already reached temperature. Energy consumption. Cut back on the use of energy. <coughs> How many thermistors are in the refrigerator and list what they are? I just found out there's five. There yeah. are five, and they were down here, weren't they? No, there's, they're all over the place. Um, you got three thermistors. Dang it. The evaporator, the freezer evaporator. Wait, let's, let's, let's find them on the diagram as we call them out. So we got three thermistors here, right? Yeah. Freezer, freezer, evaporator. Let's talk about what each one does. The freezer one does what? Temperature in the... Temperature in the freezer. In the freezer. So if we set the freezer and refrigerator temperature, if the refrigerator reaches temperature, the damper will close and keep the air inside the freezer to cool the freezer down. Okay? So the refrigerator one would control that damper. The freezer one would probably control what? The fan motor. Now both of them would control the compressor. Both of them are warm, the compressor's running. If both of them say it's warm, the compressor may run at max speed. If one's at temperature and the other one's not, it's going to change. If the refrigerator's warmer than the fridge because someone had the fridge open or cleaning it out and everything, but the freezer's good temp, they'll open that damper wide open and get as much of that freezer air over to the other side, trying to get that temperature down fast. Freezer temperature might drop down a little bit lower than it was requested, but once that refrigerator starts getting close, then they can maintain both. Okay, so what's the freezer evaporator thermistor for? Defrost? To tell the control board, hey, it's like 48, 50 degrees back there. We don't need to defrost anymore. Let's, let's go ahead and get this thing back into cooling. Didn't we talk about the Samsung one had the evaporator thermistor? When you went into diagnostics, that unit would turn on the compressor and turn everything max speed. And it was a certain amount of time from the off position uh, to this time here. And if it reached a specific temperature in the thermistor within that point, what did that mean? The sealed system was properly charged and working correctly. Now, does Frigidaire have that? I don't know. I'd have to read the diagnostics of it. But the thermistor could tell the control board, hey, 
it, in a minute and 20 seconds, it went from 50 degrees to minus 15. It, it, and the only way it's going to reach that in a specific time frame is that it's properly charged. It's probably located somewhere near the suction line defrost thermostat as well, but it's there to tell the unit, hey, how cold is that tubing inside the system? Okay. Um, so that's three. What other thermistors do we have? The ambient temperature on the board. Okay, and that was a question, right? Yeah. Board mountain ambient thermistor. I'm gonna be honest with you. I never really understood why we have a sensor on the board, because really. You can fry it. What? You can provide. You can hold uh, like a computer board because that's basically what it is, no? Yeah, but the you computer board is outside the refrigerator. It's measuring the temperature in the customer's kitchen. The ambient. Oh. Ambient is an outside man. The outside oh. air, not the air inside the refrigerator. So we already have those thermistors there. Um, I will be honest, I'll look it up, but I'm not quite sure. So then we got the ambient one. Do we have any more? You said five. I would pick out four. Where's the fifth one? It's uh, on the UI. On the UI. The ambient uh, thermistor. Dang the UI. This is the not the UI. This is the dispenser. So let's zoom out and find the UI. Get it to the left. All the way to the left. Where? Where's the user interface? I guess it's going to be on the screen. Uh, I don't know. You guys said there was another one on the user if interface. If you look at the chart, the chart tells you that there's five. Where? Um, I have it on my phone. I'm looking at the board from my phone. Okay, well, let's take a look here. This is the user interface right here. They're not showing the thermistor. Oh, already. shit, I was right, but I got four. There is five. It is five. Uh, According to the tech data. If you look at diagnostics mode, if you scroll up on your ch and you look at the chart, it says you have the FF thermistor, FZ thermistor, ambient thermistor at main board, ambient thermistor at UI, and you have the evaporator thermistor. Yeah. So that's 29, 30, 33, 34, 39. But it's not telling you where on here it is. No. So you messed up again. It might be on the pin one, two, or three. If we go to the technical data. Oh, look, you just got, oh. This thing here just jumps so much when I do it. And that's right here, right? Ambient sister, you what? 34. So if we go here. Ambient thermistor UI, US, UI shows temperature sensed at the user interface, pass within twi plus or minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit of temperature measured with, with gauge at UI location. OP if it's open or shorted. If it's open, what do you do? Or shorted, if that sensor is open or shorted? Change the board. There, it's not a part that plugs into the board. It's Probably a board mounted thermistor just like the other one. They don't even show it in the diagram. So it's probably a board mounted one like the ambient thermistor. Uh, the main board and the UI one are probably both board mounted thermistors. Okay? So that was that one. Do we have more questions? That was the last one. That was question 10. That was? Okay. Answers may vary. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the Frigidaire dryer. When the motor relay closes, it sends power to what first? That sort of is like a tricky question. What do you think it sends power to first? The belt switch. And the power comes in off of black. It uh, comes into the board here goes to the motor relay and when it closes the first thing that's going to get power is through the belt switch through the fuse and then the motor you see this thermostat here it's in series with the motor is it not yeah. it's also in series with what board what is SMPF yeah, stuff? Uh, uh, I didn't know uh, I couldn't figure that out it's 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 an electronic version of the tr low voltage transformer that power supplies the board. Uh, I forgot what the acronym is, but PS is the power supply. Uh, I forgot what 
something something um I read it I read it the other day. Uh it's 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 the transformer on the board, but it's more of an electronic uh transformer. Um so basically that's how power comes into the board. That's an answer to another question. Let's go to the next test question. Identify the connector and terminals to test the door switch from the control board. So if we were going to check the door switch, what two terminals would you do? And the connector. CN1 and 4. CN1 and 4. Then if you put your meter lead here and here, it's going to go down through the door switch and back up to the board so you can open and close the door and you can test the door switch from those two wires on the plug. If you don't get a reading, then you have to go down to the door switch to prove that your connections or your wiring is good first. Okay? You all got that one? All right. Let's go to the next question. If the dryer powered up but the motor didn't run, list all the components that would prevent the motor from starting. So the powered up meant we got power to the board and the unit has power. Yeah. So what components would keep the motor from running and which ones would you check? Door switch, belt switch, motor, the motor relay. Door switch, belt switch, motor relay. You could also check the motor itself because <coughs> the unit might be bad. And motor. Yeah. I did it with this. <coughs> okay. You have to look when you're troubleshooting and, and one specific component don't work is how does power go into that component? And this is the circuit for power to the motor, back out through the door switch, back to neutral. So if any one of these components failed, the motor won't work. What about this thermostat here? That thermostat's say, bad, would the motor run? No, the motor will still run. The motor will not run because oh, power goes through that thermostat, right? But, I hope it what would also happen if, if that thermostat was bad? The board, the board won't get any power. The board won't get its power to the transformer. The board won't light up. And that's why I specifically said the control lights up, but the motor don't run. That meant there's proper power to the board. The board's lighting up. Then our problem's somewhere else. So the thermostat wouldn't be an answer for this, but the thermostat could stop the motor, but it wouldn't even let the board light up. If the board don't light up, Really won't close. Motor and that won't thermostat is which one again? Oh, I ain't gonna tell you. That's part of the question. <laughs> we'll get to it. That's one of the last questions. <laughs> Try to get, get me to do the answer before we're ready for it, huh? There is a thermostat that says 100 degrees Celsius. What temperature is that <clears throat> Fahrenheit? And what is the name? And what is its purpose? Can we close this one? Where is that thermostat that says 100 degrees Celsius? The heater. Oh, 